Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and in this video I would like to actually tackle some MIT integration B questions from the 2020 qualifying round. So as much as possible uh, I would like to do 10 questions today and then uh, in the next video a part 2 of this I'll cover the next 10. So in, a, in all there were like 20 questions so let's do 10 try to do 10 in this video so let's get started okay so let's look at question 1 which is basically indefinite integral of natural log of 2x divided by x times natural log of x dx now first of all I would like to use some log properties and I'm I would like to split this up into two integrals so natural log of 2 divided by x times natural log of x dx plus since it was multiplied we can write them as a sum of natural logs natural log of x over uh, x times natural log of x dx now uh, natural log of 2 being a constant can be taken out we just have integral of 1 over x times natural log of x and here the natural log is going to cancel out so we just have dx over x now notice that the derivative of the natural log is 1 over x and is present over here inside the integrand so let's go for a nice evident substitution I would say let x equals natural log of x such that du is equal to dx over x and dx over x is present here so our original integral i just becomes natural log of 2 times dx over x is du over u plus in the meantime calculating this is easy natural log of absolute value of x and then this becomes natural log of 2 times natural log of u absolute value plus natural log of absolute value of x plus a constant of integration c but um, u we have to back substitute because it's an indefinite integral let's go back to x so make substitution for u equals natural log of x we get natural log of 2 times natural log of absolute value of natural log of absolute value of x you may write the absolute value you may not I'm just writing for uh, safety reason because we don't want any negative stuff inside the natural law so that's basically what question one evaluates to let's go ahead now for que question two we have i is basically defined as integral from zero to infinity of dx over e to the x plus one so we have our first improper integral a definite improper integral so what 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 do we plan to do now notice that we have an exponential in the denominator no exponential in the numerator so uh, u substitution is out of the question because we need to locate the derivative of whatever substitution we're going to make especially the denominator in this case we need to find the derivative of this thing somewhere we can't find it so if we can't find it let's just introduce it so i suggest let's divide numerator and denominator by e to the power x so e to the power x plus 1 again divided by e to the x so I can write this as a negative power 1 over e to the x is e to the negative x divided by then this will cancel to 1 and plus 1 over e to the x is e to the negative x dx and now you may see that this there is a great chance of using substitution now because if we let u is equal to 1 plus e to the negative x e to the negative x the derivative of that is present in the numerator because du is equal to negative e to the negative x dx so we have negative du on top so i is basically we have to evaluate for upper and lower bounds so if you plug in 0 here e to the 0 is 1 so 1 plus 1 is 2 and um, in the limit as x goes to infinity this term will decay to 0 the exponential just leaving us with 1 and we have a negative du as I said 
over simple u because that's how we made the substitution now i'm going to use the negative to correct the order of integration integral from 1 to 2 of du over u this is easy natural log of u no absolute value because u is basically going from 1 to 2 both are positive and this is going to be natural log of 2 minus natural log of 1 natural log of 1 is 0 so i is just natural log of 2 we've done a done with our second question now oh, moving on to question number 3 i is defined as integral from e to e to the power e of natural log of x times natural log of natural log of x divided by x dx so that's a lot of natural logs and now notice the derivative of the natural log is pre present over here dx over x is basically the the derivative of the natural log after making substitution just like our uh, question number one so let's introduce the substitution u equals natural log of x because du is dx over x but the thing we need to watch out for are the upper and lower bounds over here so when x is equal to uh, e natural log of e is 1 and uh, natural log of e to the e for the upper bound is basically e times natural log of e which is just e so our integral group from, goes from 1 to e natural log of x is u we have natural log of u and then dx over x is du fair enough so we have some linear times a natural log and this calls for integration by parts because we can differentiate this and it will disappear eventually in the meantime we can integrate this natural log uh, sorry my my bad integrating natural log is hard so you integrate this differentiate this it's basically a mat matter of precedence and practice because differentiating natural log is easier than integrating so when i do that integrating u u squared over 2 keeping this as it is natural log of u evaluated from 1 to e minus integral from 1 to e of u squared over 2 times the derivative of natural log is 1 over u du we can plug in stuff so this will be e squared over 2 and natural log of e minus 1 over 2 times natural log of 1 we will simply have a u so minus half integral from 1 to e of u du natural log of 1 is 0 natural log of e is 1 so we have e squared over 2 minus we have a half and then antiderivative of this thing will have another half u squared evaluated from 1 to e so we have e squared over 2 minus e squared over 4 plus 1 over 4 and when you simplify that you have e squared over 4 plus 1 over 4 which you may want to write as e squared plus 1 the entire thing divided by 4 that's it we're done now let's go on to the next page see you there uh, question number 4 i is defined as integral from 0 to 1 of natural log of 1 plus x over 1 minus x dx and trust me this is a really good question because what you would have ideally done in a, a more general scenario is you would have split this up into natural log of 1 plus x integrated from 0 to 1 dx minus integral from 0 to 1 of natural log of 1 minus x dx and then you would have basically done integration by parts integrating the one we have here and differentiating the natural log same thing on here but the problem is the upper and lower bounds because you won't run into any problems with this first natural log but the second natural log eventually you are going to have natural log of 1 minus 1 because of this 
giving you natural log of zero which diverges so this method is actually out of the question we basically can't split we can't split this into two uh, different integrals so we are going to have to look into more non elementary techniques okay so since this is mit integration b qualifying round it's not you know that far away in the competition the most non elementary you can go is taylor series so although i said we can't split this and evaluate this using elementary techniques i didn't say anything about splitting and evaluating by non elementary techniques so let's split this up into two integrals like this minus integral from 0 to 1 of natural log of 1 minus x dx okay and now let's use taylor series every all these natural logs are in optimum form integral from 0 to 1 of sum from k equals 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the k plus 1 over k times x to the k dx minus integral from 0 to 1 of sum from k equals 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the k plus 1 over k times negative x entire thing to the k power dx now assuming uniform and absolute convergence let's interchange these infinite sums and integral so we have sum like this integral from 0 to 1 of x to the k dx minus Minus one to the k and minus one to the k will cancel out to one, giving us with just a negative, which we can write as a positive because of this negative. Sum from k equals one to infinity of one over k integral from zero to one of x to the k dx. Now integrating this is easy. We get sum from k equals one to infinity of minus one to the k plus one over k times k plus one x to the k plus one evaluated from zero to one plus sum from k equals one to infinity of one over k times k plus one and x to the k plus one in the numerator evaluated from zero to one. Now at one this will become one and at zero this will become zero in all the both the cases actually. so all we are left with is sum from k equals 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the k plus 1 over k times k plus 1 plus sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k times k plus 1 okay so going forward we can write this First sum is sum from k equals one to infinity of minus one to the k plus one over k minus minus one to the k plus one over k plus one. Okay, and this we can do in a similar way. Sum from k equals one to infinity of one over k minus one over k plus one. and what is this first sum equal to that's right the alternating harmonic series is equal to the natural log of 2 minus and uh, there is a slight problem with this one because it's starting from k equals 1 although uh, you know we have an index plus 1 here so ideally even though k is k it will start from 1 this will go from this will be uh, minus 1 squared or 1 over 2 it it won't start from 1 like the natural log case so we we are going to have to add and subtract terms let's look at that later now if you want to just write some terms uh limit as k goes to infinity of well 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 
minus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4 and that goes on till 1 over k minus 1 over k plus 1 and this will cancel with the previous term this will cancel with the next term and this is a telescoping series basically and in the limit as k goes to infinity this remaining part 1 over k plus 1 will all tend to 0 so all of this entire sum is just equal to 1 because this remains okay so we have 1 plus natural log of 2 and if you want to write some terms of this take this negative inside so we have sum from k equals 1 to infinity a plus now because we took that in minus 1 to the k over k plus 1 so 1 plus natural log of 2 and then let's let's write some terms so we'll have um, minus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4 and so on so it is almost the alt alternating harmonic series except it's missing the one the, the first term so let's add and subtract that so when we add that here we're also going to have to subtract that because we, we can't just introduce a one out of nowhere and this one and that one is going to cancel out so we have natural log of 2 and this is going to infinity is again natural log of 2 right alternating harmonic series we have 2 times natural log of 2 for i which basically equals natural log of 4 and trust me this was one of the best questions of the qualifying round of 2020 this was you know already question 4 but one of their best questions if you ask me but we successfully solved it with a relatively non-elementary technique hey we are halfway there question number 5 already so let's define i as integral indefinite integral of 1 over x squared plus x minus 1 the whole thing squared dx now we have no other option but to expand the bracket in the denominator so we have integral of 1 over x squared plus x squared minus 2x plus 1 dx so that will become uh, dx over 2x squared minus 2x plus 1 we would like to complete the square properly so we need to pull out a 2 from the denominator so we have dx over uh, x squared minus x plus 1 over 2 and now to complete the square notice this b term has a coefficient of 1 you divide that by 2 and square it we have we obtain 1 over 4 so we add and subtract 1 over 4 so x squared minus x plus 1 over 4 plus half minus 1 over 4 so we since we can't just drop in a 1 over 4 we need to add and subtract that like that and now notice this first part over here these three terms is exactly x minus 1 half squared because if you you know just expand it quickly you obtain x squared minus 2 times uh, 1 over 2 times x is x and 1 over 2 squared is 1 over 4 so you obtain that and this will just become 1 over 4 which we can write as 1 over 2 the whole thing squared now this is easy right the inverse tangent formula so 1 over 2 times 1 over 1 over 2 times inverse tangent of basically uh, x minus 1 over 2 divided by 1 over 2 plus c this will cancel out we have inverse tangent of take the lcm 2x minus 1 over 2 times 2 over 1 plus constant of integration c we have inverse tangent of the 2's will cancel just 2x minus 1 plus c and if you don't believe me you can differentiate it it's not that hard to differentiate either so yeah this was pretty easy all right question number six 
i is basically equal to integral of square root of x which has another square root of x and a square root of x and this goes on till infinity basically dx so nested radical it looks quite intimidating but it's frankly not because if you let y equal to this nested radical and this is not a substitution this is more like uh, de defining this radical to be something else just for algebraic simplification purposes you square both sides y squared is equal to we will lose one top square root the outer square root so x times square root of x and uh, square root of x square root of x goes on till infinity if we lose one square root out of an infinite radical it doesn't matter because we can write this as y squared is equal to this is nothing but y x times y so we have y squared minus x y is equal to 0 factorize y we have y minus x is equal to 0 so either y is equal to 0 which will make the entire sum go to 0 but you know this is unlikely unlikely because it's a trivial solution to this thing the other solution is y is equal to x which is pretty plausible so if you make that substitution instead of this uh, instead of we basically had y dx right instead of y if we substitute x based on this evaluation we have x dx which is pretty simple to evaluate right this is like basic calculus x squared over 2 plus constant of integration c that's assuming that y is equals 0 is unlikely you know it's, it's not a viable solution for this uh, question number 7 and, and trust me this is also a good question again one of those illusion ones it's like looking at it first you may feel it's quite challenging but frankly it's not it's just about good observation so this is a, a neat a trigonometric mania it's a crazy stuff happening here so notice that uh, if we can basically multiply the two cosine terms these bracketed terms we get cosine squared x minus sine squared x right difference of squares formula and what is this exactly cosine of 2x right the double angle formula for the cosine so cosine 2x dx so one hint is we we, we, can, we have to use double angles so if we used cosine double angle then can we use it sine double angle for this well if you're thinking in that direction you're perfectly correct because we can write this as 2 times sin x cosine x the entire thing to the 4th power but this will mean we are multiplying by 2 to the 4th or 16 and we can't do that because we didn't have that originally so we'll divide by 16 multiply and divide by 16 essentially making it a 1 and cosine of 2x dx and what is 2 times sin x cosine x that's right sin 2x so we have sin 2x to the 4th power times cosine 2x dx and 1 over 16 is taken outside so now let's make a substitution let u is equal to sine of 2x that's because du is equal to 2 times cosine 2x dx so we only need a 2 so let's multiply and divide by a 2 like this so we have 1 over 32 and integral of u to the 4th and we have 2 cosine 2x dx is du like that and this will is easy this will become u to the phi divided by 32 into phi plus c but we need to make substitutions right indefinite integral so making those substitutions we have sine of 2x to the fifth power over 150 plus constant of integration c so again an example of intimidating yet seemingly easy if you observe properly uh, okay so now question 8 
i is defined as indefinite integral of natural log of x squared plus 1 dx and since it's an indefinite integral using Taylor series is out of the question because we'll anyways get with uh, end up with an uh, some weird series because there are no upper and lower bounds to simplify that simplify x so notice we have a 1 here and we have this so it's time to do good old fashioned integration by parts so we will differentiate this because differentiation of natural log is better than, and th than their integration and then we will integrate this so integrate integrating both times integral of 1 with respect to x is x and then keeping the first term as it is x squared plus 1 but since we can't we you know there is no need to evaluate it it's an indefinite integral leave it as it is minus integral of x as it is and then differentiate this we obtain x squared plus 1 and factor of 2x in the denominator in the numerator because of chain rule dx fair enough we have x times natural log of x squared plus 1 minus 2 times x squared over x squared plus 1 dx now i would like to mimic the denominator on top so i'll add and subtract 1 so we have x times natural log of x squared plus 1 minus 2 times integral of x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1 dx plus minus minus plus 2 times integral of dx over 1 plus x squared. So we end up with x times natural log of x squared plus 1. This will go to 1. So integral of 1 with respect to x is just x. So 2x. And this is inverse tangent, 2 times inverse tangent of x, but don't forget the constant of, constant of integration c. So uh, that's how we do it and there's no need to back substitute because it was completely in x. We started with x, we ended in x. So this is good old fashioned integration by parts. Okay, uh, so let's look at question number 9 and I after you know actually doing this integral I felt that this question number 9 was more of an eliminator because I, I think most of the people taking this um, exam would not have been able to calculate question number 9 so let's look at what it is so i is defined as integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine to the 20 20 power x dx and instead of calling it just a regular i, I'm going to call it i sub 2020. So now what I'm going to do, you know, and this is a general method for sines and cosines of to raise to an arbitrary power integrated. That's, you know, basically what I call the reduction formula, commonly called the reduction formula. So what I'm going to do now is have this integral and then I'm going to split this up into two things. So I'm going to write cosine 2020 x as cosine 2019 x multiplied with cosine of x so that you know both of them eventually will add up to 2020 and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use integration by parts. So I'll be integrating this naturally because it has no power. It's easy to integrate and I'll be differentiating this. So I sub 2020 is going to be um, so again, integration by parts. So uh, we will end up with a uh, sine of x when we integrate this cosine of 2019 x as it is unchanged evaluated from 0 to 2 pi minus 2019 because now we'll be differentiating this integral from 0 to 2 pi of so 2019 and the cosine to the 2018x 
and we have a negative sign because of the chain rule. So that negative, this negative, sine times this sine of integration. So we have a sine squared x dx. And because of this sine, sine is 0 at both 2 pi and 0. So because of this sine, this entire expression will go to 0 always. So we just have 20, 19. Then times integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine of 20, 18 of x. And we can write sine as 1 minus cosine squared x. Sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared x dx. So uh, basically this is 2019 and integral from 0 to 2 pi of cos, cos to the 2018x dx minus 2019 and integral from 0 to 2 pi of this cos squared and this cos to the 2018 will make a cos to the 2020 of x dx. This is i sub 2020. Notice this again is i sub 2020. So let's club these terms together. So we have i sub 2020 and then 1 plus 2019 is equal to basically 2019 times integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine to the 2018 x dx. So i sub 2020 is basically 2019 over 2020 times i sub 2018, right? Just using the repeating the convention. And um, if you do do this for some more terms, say for i i sub 2018, you will recognize the pattern at hand is basically 2017 over. 2018 times i sub 2016. So for an i sub n which is which can be defined as integral from 0 to 2 pi of um, cosine to the n of x dx given that n is even this for all all of this will go to 0 by symmetry n is even um, This can be expressed as basically n minus 1 over n times i sub n minus 2. And that's pretty evident looking at all these different cases that we are considering around here. Okay, so now use recursively i sub 2020 is just going to be 2019 over. 2020 times i sub 20, 2018. Now i sub 2018 is this 2017 over 2018 and 2016. And 2016 can be written as 2016 over um, 2015 over 2016. My God. And that will go on until i sub 0 because See, 2020 is an even number, right? So eventually, if you keep if you keep reducing by two, if you keep reducing by two, for some integer n equals 1010, you will eventually come across zero, right? So if you keep doing that, uh, 110 times, you will eventually come across i sub zero, and i sub zero. I sub 0 is basically integral from 0 to 2 pi of cosine to the 0 of x dx. Anything to a 0 power is 1. So we just have this integral 1 dx integrated from 0 to 2 pi, which is just 2 pi. So I sub 1 will just be 2 pi. So I sub 2020 can be expressed as look at the numerator. This is a double factorial going on because we're skipping 2. So 2019, we skip 2018 and 2017. So 2019 double factorial over 2020 double factorial again we are skipping 2 and times 2 pi i, I sub 0 is 2 pi and 
Now again, if you want to substitute or simplify stuff using gamma functions, this will be two to the one zero one five times gamma of twenty nineteen over two plus one divided by two to the one zero one five. to the one one zero one five times gamma of one zero one five actually not one zero one five one zero one six one zero one five factorial but that will be gamma of one zero one six times two pi so notice these terms cancel out we just have gamma of two zero one nine over two plus one over Gamma of one zero one five with a two pi up front. That's i sub twenty twenty. You know, you know, writing in gamma in terms of gamma function one zero one six my dear is actually optional. You can just leave it at the double factor. This is perfectly acceptable. So, yeah, I hope you like the twenty twenty special cosine integral. Okay, so moving on to last integral of the day. Is defined as i, which is equal to indefinite integral of 2x plus 1 divided by 2x squared plus 2x plus 1 dx. And and our and our natural strategy for ta tackling integrals of such kind would be to because the numerator has a one is the the degree of the numerator is one less than the degree of the denominator. So our natural strategy to tackle such integrals. is to basically try to copy the derivative of the denominator in the numerator such that we can you know do a nice substitution later on so the derivative of the denominator so the derivative with respect to x of 2x squared plus 2x plus 1 is going to be 4x plus 2 and how does that relate to a numerator our numerator is just half of this so half Of four x plus two divided by two x squared plus two x plus one dx. And now let's do our great substitution. Let u equal two x squared plus two x plus one. Because as I said, it's new. It's denote. Its derivative is present in the numerator because du is four x plus two dx, which is exactly the numerator. So we have i is equal to half of integral of du over u. This is pretty easy. Half of natural log of absolute value of u plus c. Now back substituting, back substituting because it's an indefinite integral. U is our two x squared plus two x plus one plus c. And to be uh, frank with you, I don't think we require a absolute value because I think it's a quadratic. It will it won't be zero, I think. But still, you know, let's just have it for to avoid any problems in the future. So that's basically what i is equal to, and that's question number ten. And uh, that's it for this video. Please uh, stay tuned. I'll be doing questions from 11 to 20 in my next video. So that's it. I hope you had fun. So as always, I would like to say please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Recommend me to your friends. You can follow me on Instagram, gamma underscore die gamma. I need more subscribers, guys. So you know, please spread the word. In the meantime, stay home, stay safe. Have a great day. Do math, have fun, and peace out.